This is the opportunity for relearning and reteaching solving exponential equations, which was section 14.1 to 14.3. I'd like you to follow along with this video. We're going to take a look at solving four exercises involving exponential equations. Um, you can solve them along with me in the left-hand column. And on the right-hand side, take whatever kind of notes you want to that will help you remember how to solve that specific type of problem. And that can be words, pictures, connections to something else, example problems, anything else that you'd like. Following that, I'd like you to flip to the next page and solve some of these problems on your own. If you want to refer back to these notes, uh, that's fine. And then I've got a couple of questions for you on the last page. So the important thing to keep in mind about an exponential equation, thinking about what an equal sign means, this expression, whatever it means, and this expression, whatever it means, have exactly the same value. Great. So we're talking about exponentials. The base 3 raised to some exponent is equal to the base 3 raised to some other exponent. Well, this is 3 to a power equals 3 to a power. The only way these two equations can be equal is if these powers are equal. So that's going to be our approach. First, making sure that we have the same base, 3 to the something equals 3 to the something, then writing the exponents equal to one another. So this exponent, 2x, equals this exponent, x minus 4. So no longer do we have this confusing exponential equation. We've broken this down to what it really means, and then recognizing for these two to be equal, the exponents have to be equal. We write that equation and solve it. And this is an equation that you've been solving since middle school. 2x equals x minus 4. So I, need, I have variables on both sides, so I need to go ahead and combine those. So minus x minus x, 2x minus 1x is x, x minus x is 0, and so x is equal to negative 4. I can go back and check this if I want. 2 times negative 4 should be equal to negative 4 minus 4, so negative 8 equals negative 8, and that checks. So I can see that negative 4 is the correct solution to this equation, which means it makes this equation true. Looking at another example, 10 to the negative 2x equals 1 tenth. So in this case, I've got an exponential expression on the right-hand side, 10 to the negative 2, uh, on the left-hand side, rather. On the right side, just this fraction. So I'm thinking, what can I raise 10 to that gives me this value? And I could guess and check and plug things in. Or thinking about how I solved this first equation, I'm going to write 1 tenth in a different form. 1 over 10 is the same thing as 10 to the negative 1 power. If you look on your calculator, you, many times you'll see a button that says x to the negative 1, which means inverse. So the inverse of 10 is 1 tenth. They're reciprocals. If I write the right-hand side as 10 to the negative 1, now look what I've got. I've got an exponential equation with the same base. 10 to the negative 2 equals 10 to the negative 1. Now, same story like I had in my first exercise. Same base means I can write the exponents equal to one another. And so x is equal to 1 half. So let's use that same tactic. On the right-hand side, 125 to the x, so this is an exponential expression. The left-hand side, 5 to the 2x plus 2. So I have an exponential expression equal to another exponential expression. That's great. So I know at some point I'm going to set the exponents equal to one another, but I can't do that just yet. Why not? If we take a look back at our original equation, number one example, 3 to the something equals 3 to the something. The bases were the same. In our number two example, we rewrote the right-hand side and had the same base. Here, I don't have the same base. So I need to ask myself, is there some way I can rewrite this equation, this expression, 125 to the x power, so that it has a base of 5? Well, let's remind ourselves. 125 is equal to 5 to the third. So I'm going to rewrite 125 as 5 to the third, and we'll raise that to the x power. 
right-hand side, 5 equals 2x plus 2. Great. I still need to simplify on the right-hand side. 5 to the third to the x, remembering from Algebra 1, reminding ourselves that when we raise a power to a power, we can multiply the exponents. 3 times x is 3x. So now I've rewritten the right-hand side. I've used what I already know about math and about exponents to change the way the right side looks without changing its value so that it's in a form that I can use to solve an equation. 5 to the 2x plus 2 equals 5 to the 3x. Now I can set the exponents equal. 2x minus 2x is 0, so the right-hand side has just 2. 3x minus 2x is 1x. So in this case, the exponent 2, x equals 2, will solve this exponential equation. All right, one last example. Here I've got an expression with a radical equals another radical. And we might say to ourselves, well, wait a minute, I thought we were solving exponentials here. Why do I have radicals involved? So if we think back to some of the things we did right before Christmas break at the end of the first semester, we found out that a radical can be rewritten as a fractional exponent. So a fourth root can be expressed as an exponent of one-fourth. A cube root can be expressed as an exponent of one-third. So I can take the radicand, a to the x plus 6 power, and raise that to the one-third. Similarly here, a to the 3x minus 2 raised to the one-fourth. Great. What happens then? Well, power to a power. I multiply the exponents. 3x times one-fourth, that's three-fourths x. 2 times one-fourth, that's one-half. Here, a to the one-third x plus one-third of 6 is 2. Okay. So now, a to the something equals a to the something. I can set the exponents equal to one another. From here, I can solve this equation. It's variables on both sides, and I can see that it'll be a little bit easier if I can knock out some of the, exp uh, some of the, uh, the fractions. So I'm thinking about 4, 2, and 3, and I want a common denominator, at least common multiple for 4, 2, and 3, and I can see that that's going to be 12. So I'm going to multiply the entire equation by 12. 12 times 3 is 36, divided by 4 is 9, 9x. Half of 12 is 6, so 9x minus 6. One third of 12 is 4, so 4x, and then 12 times 2 is 24. Let's solve this equation now. Adding 6, adding 6, so 5x equals 30. And then x is equal to 6. So hopefully you've been able to work through these exercises with me. Uh, you've taken some notes for yourself on the right-hand side that remind you of critical moments, things that uh, will help you to be able to solve one of these equations on your own. Now, go ahead, take the notes that you've taken, stop the video, flip to the next page, and go ahead and work through the set of exercises. They match up with these four, so if you've been able to work through these four successfully, you should have not too much trouble working through the four on the next page. And then don't forget to answer those three questions on the last page as well.